So it gets clear. Right? Uh, the time was perfect, I think, because everyone were hungry for being able to be trained in this art. It became an art and a skill. And also, there was a backseat, uh, people took a backseat in what we call as value systems. So you see, it was a value input, subtly through a story. People were looking for values, for life skills for public speaking skills, for being able to train. So the need started growing and from teachers, that's what we initially started with because teachers started using this now. Uh, some of them of course believed in it and started transmitting stories, uh, uh, through stories, the concepts in the classrooms. But you know what, storytelling itself was such a frivolous word which was taken in. Nobody took it as a serious thing. It was viewed more for entertainment than for educational purpose. And it was not science and math. So even today we have that problem. Even today there are organizations after 22 years, schools coming and saying, what will you do and how will it help our children if you do storytelling for them? So it will take a long time still for us to feel that storytelling can actually be the basis of all learning. But um, uh, I, I wouldn't be very uh, pessimistic about this because other fields like corporate uh, and professionals, grandparents, parents, they all started opening up and so we started the academy for storytelling. When I travelled around the world, I found the similar scenario. So not many people were forthcoming about storytelling as a profession. So I fo also found there was no institute for storytelling in the world. And I said, let me start my academy. We started an international academy for storytelling. Uh, we don't want to be responsible for people giving up their jobs, but it has had that kind of an impact where it has transformed the person from completely from within. So this is without using any hypnosis or any kind of mesmerizing or magic, just merely speaking the value, the inherent value that a story can carry and that's the power of the story itself. I think stories have the power that they have quietly stayed there like love and they are not being very aggressive but it has continued over the years and that's why I always say that the universe is made up of stories and not atoms. The International Academy of Storytelling which is Katalia's training wing uh, is where our strength lies actually. And we've trained about uh, 85,000 people uh, just in the field of storytelling because you know 22 years. Uh, of course through the academy we have about 1,500 people trained uh, who actually hold certificates. Uh, and diploma we have completed uh, 20 batches now which is a deeper, in, more intense form of training. So we are actually strengthening our training skills. We are going to come up with the advanced diploma course, the first one which we are offering for people from Istanbul. So we're also, uh, we've also planted the seeds of this academy and storytelling in different countries. Uh, you know, unless, uh, unlike uh, a lot of things which India actually uh, imports, I think we're exporting the storytelling, which I'm very proud about. So I'm on the board of many of the organizations since the seed was planted by us. So these people from Istanbul are coming down in January to do our advanced diploma course. So we see that also as a future where we can have uh, more people trained more professionally uh, so that you know there is a serious, it becomes a serious thing. In the listening capacity is taking a back seat and we don't know what to listen to and whom to listen to. So our priorities get completely messed up. So people don't know what to prioritize on. So I think it's so essential that we need to have that oral tradition today. What we call oral tradition may be a big name, but I think just a person who will listen to you and a person who will talk clearly 
and will not have a confused muddled mind when speaking. Everything has uh, taken a vaccine because of this entire technological development that's happening around us, uh, which, which has an increase in everything else also. So I think it's so essential that oral tradition needs to be revived. I would say reclaiming is a good word. We need to reclaim this tradition. Earlier I would have said yes. <laughs> Because it's also about, also about practicing. It's a service-oriented field where unless you practice something and experience it day by day, you do not improve on it. It's almost like driving, swimming, any of those skill-based activities. So speaking also is like that. So you see, even for a storyteller, they need to practice. It's like doing a sadhana every morning for music or for any other skill. So I think it needs practice. Now the other problem with storytelling also is that you need to listen to the listeners. What happens when someone starts fidgeting? What happens when a child is not, who is, suddenly starts crying? How do you handle situations? All this is part of the storytelling skill. So it's not about just telling a story, but it's an art which you need to also see if you can also handle listeners um, and different types of audiences. And I think we do a lot of this in our courses. Because the course is only not about the techniques of telling, but also how do you handle situations and how do you adapt to different styles of telling. I think if you don't enjoy telling a story, you know, then there's no point. I think it's for any profession, but especially for storytelling, because you know you're going to involve your audience into this. And you're sharing something very important, which is your emotion. So if I, if I, if I don't feel, say, thirsty, in the thirsty group. Or if I'm uh, saying that the hippopotamus laughed <laughs> and I don't feel that emotion of laughter, how am I going to transmit this? So the key elements will also be, I would say, is to experience that story within. The inherent, the you know, internal aspects of a storyteller are so important. At the same time, it is not theatre. So this is something many people mistake. So I don't have to be theatrical. Ho, 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 ho. So I don't have to do this, uh, I mean, I'm not against humor clubs, but I don't have to have this artificial laughter. So, you know, you can actually feel happy when you're telling the story. And I'm sure the listeners will sense that happiness. So key elements, if you want to be technically sound, then I would say maybe sounds. So uh, sounds can play a great part in storytelling. Um, for instance, it's, it's, uh, if you say the tomato crossed the road and went patak, everyone can relate to it. So that's one thing that I always use, a lot of sounds which are very tribal in nature. Uh, the other thing will be the textures, colors. Yeah, so there was this beautiful golden sun, you know, who slowly thought he was feeling sleepy. He began to yawn and close his eyes and, you know, it became a little deep yellow now. And it was like orange because it was really feeling sleepy, right? So I bring the colors of even the sun in a very nice way if I have to tell people instead of just mechanically saying. So I think going slow is another big mantra because, you know, people are seeing the story. So I need people to see that story. So that's another element that I would definitely add. So emotions, colors, textures, sounds together can make that story very, very, very interesting. Yeah. And then other bonus is like my music or a rhyme, uh, which can add colors. But I think this is the key element of the story. Traveling to so many countries around the world, telling stories, sharing stories, you know, you also pick up things to help you with your storytelling. And there is something which is very special for each country. So when I went to Oro Preto, which is, they say is the land of gold. Uh, well, it's, got, it's the land of black gold. And I went to Oro Preto and this was in Brazil. And so in Brazil, you know, just by the wayside, by we were telling stories outside churches, I found this man who was selling this, this beautiful baby, you know, and it's, it's, you can see it's so, so, so traditional because it goes with the, with the culture of the place, the way people look there also. 
So you see, uh, I just love the stall. And you know, sometimes uh, we, we have a whole, again, a room full of these things. So this also helps us when we tell stories, to pick up new things. So you see this doll, it's a traditional folk doll. Uh, it's from Turkey, it was a gift actually given to me. But it was not just given, because the people who came as a gift, the storytellers, um, they explained that this is a traditional festival in Turkey. And they use cloth, which they use for their everyday lives. And you see, this is a weaving, it's one of their uh, traditions, uh, because they're weavers, the women are weavers. And if you see, uh, this is a horseshoe magnet, which uh, is also for, they believe a lot of superstition. You know, they, that, uh, you know, it awards the evil eye. So this is one of the things that they use. This is from Sri Lanka. Again, like Kerala, they use a lot of drums. And this doll especially was in an old puppet museum, where that man was actually closing it down. Because you see again, uh, storytelling traditions are slowly, uh, I wouldn't say that because of technology, you know, people don't want to come and buy any more puppets or do string puppets. So this is one of the string puppets that people used for puppeteering in, in Sri Lanka. Uh, you can see a very traditional dhoti, and, you know. So they have taken a lot of pains and so we bought this dog from them. You see the one next to it? It's a witch. This witch had a story, has a story when I went to Switzerland uh, with one of my colleagues from Catalia. This was way back in 2003. And at that time we went, you know, we saw these masks outside one, uh, one place in Bern. And we thought, okay, uh, there are a lot of masks. Maybe they, these people sell masks. When we went in, it was actually a saloon. And we said, oh, and uh, ouch, we were very sorry. And just as we were leaving, there was a very old woman. And she said, oh, so you're from India? And we said, yes. Who are you? And we said, we are storytellers. And she said, you know what? I am moving from Switzerland. And my house is just down that corner. And I have a lovely doll which I want to give you. Because I have treasured it for many, many years. It was passed on from my great-grandmother to my grandmother. So actually, we went to her house. And this is the doll that she actually gave us. So it's something very precious. Uh, so it's a village story actually completely, you know, done uh, as an applique work. And I think it's such a lovely way to present a story cloth. One style may be like this. And the other style can be just like, you know, different pictures. And each one depicts a story. So you can even make a lot of these kind of putters that they call to tell you, tell a story. We have different self-help groups of women. Uh, and it's also giving them employment. So they actually come up and uh, they do it. Of course, we give them the idea. And that's how we get our puppets, our masks, and everything like that. So we also create materials. Uh, one is that uh, we, we uh, make, I mean, we buy, and the other is like creating, you know, and wear it all like that. <laughs> so it helps a lot also. Of course, we don't use this for very little children. But, you know, when you're doing four or five stories, it helps when you use one say, with masks. So, there are a lot of masks that we have made. And that's also part of our treasure chest, as we say, a story chest, that we are also setting up in schools and in other places. Uh, we are calling it the Katalia Learning Centers. And we are setting it up as a consolidation phase of Katalia. So, the stories continue. So in that story chest, we have all these materials which people can use for storytelling. A story chest like this, it has lots of things inside. A lot of materials in the story chest now. And this has to go along with the stories, which also has a story map. It has an outing. It has movies that you can show, which is associated with just one story. So we've done a lot of research and we've brought out about, uh, we've taken about 100 stories. So that, you know, we want storytelling to continue. So uh, Katalia is having now the tributaries, I would say, from the dam that we, we collected all these years, the story bank. Now we are opening up that dam so that the rivers can flow, one for irrigation, one for whatever. So individuals are taking the centers, institutions are taking the centers. 
we train them and we set up these centers in whoever wants to continue the tradition of storytelling. Uh, we've also brought out another little kit called the Minmini, which is a little kit for pregnant women and the newly borns. We're going to start launching that in the hospitals uh, so that people who are interested in taking uh, stories, again, it will have at least uh, 50 stories which a person can use because, again, we're creating an ambience for, you know, baby. Uh, prenatal care is a big thing today. And I think the child needs to grow in a very good ambience. So reading aloud stories through our story cards, which is what we will be giving in the mini, is what you will get if you like, if you take that product. So we're bringing several products now to make that storytelling, uh, to, to bring storytelling alive, to retain storytelling, to revive and to continue the tradition of storytelling. So you see we have a very rich treasure of stories. We don't really have to look anywhere else for it. And I'm so glad that the world is coming to us in this field. Because when I travel abroad, for instance, uh, we had the first Panchatantra festival in Sweden. And Swedish government, the Ministry of Culture called us mainly because they said we don't have any storytelling tradition. So we have that tradition, we just have to as, as we did probably 22 years back, keep reviving this and be proud of our own culture and our own stories. A lot of people are of course doing that now, but we need more people, more practitioners and to feel mainly proud of it.